All right, we are at the point where let's start writing some code. Okay, so I'm going to right mouse click on here and I'm going to choose view code or you can hit your F7 key. But this brings up our code window. So like I said, we want to start writing some code. You know that that's basically that's all we've got in there right now are our using statements, etc. So there's almost almost nothing in there. As we write this, again, you don't have to put in the comments. I'm going to put in the comments or some comments. And, and you know, again, you've got the working copy already. So you can do that if you want to. If you don't, you don't have to. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is come in here and say random rand equals new random. You already know that seeds the rand. That's going to make sure that each time we run this program, ideally we're going to have those 16 different images in different positions every time we run it. All right. That's the first thing we want to do. Now, we've always used arrays, but there's another thing that you can use that are called lists. You don't have to worry about, about right now what the difference between them are, but a list is like an array. Okay, so I'm going to build a list for you right now. It's going to be about four or five lines long. So I'm going to say list, string, and it looks a little goofy, the syntax. We'll talk about it in just a minute. So I'm going to fill this up right now. Make sure these are lowercase and not uppercase. Make sure at the end you put a semicolon. All right. We're going to have two more variables, so I'll put those in too. So this is what I added right here, what's in the blue. Please put that in. So if you look up on the screen here, I don't know which is which, but let's suppose right here, this, let's suppose, is the eye. This right here, let's suppose, that's the bicycle. You get the idea? So we'll have two of the eyes, two of the bicycles, two of the ambulances, etc. That's what we're doing right there. That's what that list is symbolizing. So again, that list will hold our icons. You look up on the screen here. Remember, remember what the game looks like? It looks like this. One, two, three, one, two, three. 
all right? That's what the game looks like, right? And let's suppose that the I is right here and the I is right there. And let's say that I know that now. So I click here and it shows me the I. That would be the first one I clicked. When I click here, that'll be the second one I click. Does that make sense, what first clicked and second clicked mean? All right. It's the first one you clicked and the second one you clicked. All right. Does everybody have that code in? Yes? What? Okay. Where that says icons right there, those are just the pictures, right? I just call them icons. You can call them whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> okay. Just this. What we want to do then is when the game starts, we want there to be 16 icons on the screen. Does that make sense? When a game starts, we want there to be 16 icons on the screen. Well, in order to do that, we've got to write our own routine to put those 16 icons out on the screen. All right? And I was not really very imaginative here with the names. All right? So I called mine Assign Icons to Game. That's what we're going to do. All right? So if you go right underneath where it says Public Form, Memory Game, or whatever you called your form, I want you to go underneath that, hit Enter a couple times, because we're going to type in a function right here. Caught up? All caught up? All right. So I'm going to type in here Public Void assign icons to game kind of long but it pretty much shows you what's happening in here all right this particular function is about 20 lines long probably one of the longest ones that we've got in this program here but we're going to put that in right now all right now what we've always done in the past is we've gone and dragged out a label gave it a name etc but you can also, when you create labels, you can create them programmatically. That's what we're going to do right now. Okay? So we're going to say this. Label. Current label. All right? And that will be the current item or the current icon, I guess. That's all it is. Now, remember, we get that green squiggly because we haven't used that yet. All right, that'll go away in just a minute. Then we're going to do an int random number. And that'll literally be the random image number. Okay. We're going to, you know, remember, look up on the screen here. Even if you're still typing, stop for a second. That's 0, 1, 2, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Does that make sense? Okay. So what we when we want, so if we generate a four, we're gonna get something like this. And that J, let's just say that's the I. So that J will be random number. And we want to put it in our current label. So all that makes sense? Alright. Alright, let's keep going. Now, what I want to do is I want to be able to come in here and I want to fill this grid up. The idea is I want to fill this up. I don't want it to be filled up with 16 airplanes. I want it to have two eyes. I want it to have two ambulances, etc. That's what I want. 
So I've got to program that in. That's what we're going to do right now. Okay? There's, I, there's some extra code that's in here that actually didn't have to be written. Do you all hear me? There's extra code in here that didn't have to be written. So you go, well, that's fine. Then why the hell did you write it? All right? Because you might decide later that you want to add things to the game. All right? So we're trying to do a little bit of forward thinking in what we're doing. And if you don't understand what I mean, then just keep watching. Okay? So we want to go through all 16 of these. The way we do that is we use a for loop. For int i equals 0. I, I'm going to have to make this smaller. There we go. Less than that TLP that we used before dot controls dot count plus plus I. All that's saying is we want to go through all 16 of those boxes. That makes sense? That's all we want to do here. All right. Again, it's possible that in the future, if you look up on the screen, we might decide we want something else there. Maybe we don't just want that label. Maybe we want to put something else there. Maybe we want that to say airplane, for example. We might. So that's why we're actually going to put in a little bit extra code that we really probably don't need. And that's this if statement right here. And sorry, I got it. Somebody is keeps keeps sending me emails, so I want to close this. There. All right. Let's, let's look at the screen here. In English, what this says is this. Hey, if what's in here is a label, it becomes the current label. And if it's not, skip it. That's what that whole if statement means. Since the only thing we have in there is a label, we didn't really need the if, but we may decide to upgrade the game later. All right? So again, this for loop is just going to run through and make sure that we have labels. That's it. All right? Now, make sure you're, you stay in the for loop here. We're still in the for loop, but under the else, hit enter a couple times. We are still in the for loop. We have three more lines of code we have to put in here. First, random number, whoops, random number equals rand.next zero icons.count
right? That's the rest of that function. Please look up on the screen, even if you're still typing, just for a second, okay? I want to explain these three lines. This one says, give me a random number between 1 and 16, which is what it's going to do. This says, what I want to do is I want to go and set the picture that goes into here to the associated number. The problem is, if I keep running this, what if I keep generating 4? You understand what I'm saying? Now I'm going to have four in there a bunch of times. So once you've generated the number, get rid of it from the list. Okay? So again, imagine that I did this. Let's say that I had, I'm going to make these up. I'm going to put in six numbers. One, six, 13, eight, one, six. Well, that'll work. That'll work. That'll work. That'll work. That's already been used, so it'll do it again. So let's say it does it again and it gets an 8. It says, no, that one's there already too. So it does it again and gets a 4. Now it's okay. So it's going to keep going through until our grid has got two of each one of our images. And after you generate the number, remove it from the list so it can't be called again. All right? Now, please look up on the screen just for a second. All right? I want you to answer this question for me, any one of you. I'm going to run the program. And it looks exactly the same. Why? What? I wrote this function. That's it. I'm never calling the function. So we've got to go right here. This is the constructor. This is the thing that gets called at the beginning. That's why I put this right below it. Right after it says initialize component, I want you to call this. So add this line. Make sure it's in here. The line you're adding is the one here. Now I'm going to save it, I'm going to run it, and let's see what happens. Well, looky there. New things. I think you'd all agree the first row is magnifying glass, heart, eye, bicycle, right? I'm going to run this again. So I'm going to stop the run, and I'm going to run it again. It's got a lot of the same stuff, but it's not the same. All right. I'm going to run it one more time. The point is, every time I'm running it now, and it's not changing too much, I'm surprised. But the point is, I'm getting different, I'm getting the icons in different positions at every time. Does that make sense? All right. So this would be a good time for us to come back into our program here. And click our double disk icon, which is our save all. So let's do a save all. Then let's come back to here. And notice what it's telling us now. The only thing we've changed is our form file. We added code, but we have not changed the actual form, right? So that's our CS file. So we're going to come in here, and we're going to, again, come in, in this box right here. This time, I should have done this the first time. I didn't, sorry. But I'm going to type in here, version 2. Code added to fill the game with 
images in random locales. If you don't like that, you can put whatever you want to put in there, but something along those lines. So we're doing our second version. I really should have written version one before we did the first version. I didn't. It'll be fine. Once you've done that, click the commit all button that's right here. Go ahead and click that. So type in something like this. Click the commit all button. All right. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click Commit All. You may or may not have noticed that's a different number than I had before. All right. And you don't have to do this, but please look up on your screen, everybody. Please look up on the screen here. I'm going to click where it says Actions, the down arrow, and I'm going to click View History. Notice what I have. Initial GUI created add project, you know, etc. So it's showing me this in reverse chronological order. It's saying, hey, version 2, added code. This was version 1, initial GUI created. See that? So we, we are using version control. All right? So I, I don't care about this so I can close this window. I have a question for you, and you should all be able to get this. What's wrong with this game right now? It shows them. It technically isn't a game. It's already over, right? So we've got to change that. Now, there's a lot of ways that we can change this. Just so you know, there are a lot of different ways that we can change this. All right? The easiest way to change this is, is to do this. To go back and, and draw each one of these images. What color are they right now? What color are the images right now? Yeah. What if we make them cornflower blue? Then they're drawn, but you can't see them, right? It's like drawing white on white or black on black. You can't see it. Question? Okay. All right, we can take a look at it in just a sec. But the, the point is what we want to do is to go back and change that. And it's not really, you know, very hard. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll show them how to change it, and then I'll, walk, I'll go, come over by you guys. All right? The easiest way to do it is like this. Let's go back into design mode. All right. And we may or may not still have all these images highlighted. So I'm going to hold down on the control key and I'm going to click each image. I want each one of these to be highlighted. That one I don't think is there. Now, it looks, though, as though I've got the little black dots everywhere, so I think they're all highlighted, okay? Now, there's other ways to do this, but the easiest way that I could think of was to come back here now, find our four color, not our back color. Our back color is already cornflower blue. We want our four, four color, which is the color of the text. We want to change the four color, come back into web, and find cornflower blue. Again, it's about two-thirds or so of the way down. There it is. See what happened on the screen? They're there, but they were now drawn in blue. So we drew cornflower blue images on the cornflower blue background so you don't see it. What we have to do next is set it up so when we run the game and we click right here, we change the color of that text from cornflower blue Back to black. Does that make sense? And you could do all sorts of stuff. You could change colors on this, you know, etc. There's a lot of stuff that could could be done. All right. So let me walk over there and, and see what your error is.
this gives it a good and this is opportunity. Change that from icon.com icon.com minus one. Yeah, it was this one before too. I think that's what's actually fine here. I just that that's different than the handout I gave you at the right. I just want to show you what's type. Get get rid of that. Error appears to be on the wrong line. I mean, the answer is always in the code, right? You know, it's in there someplace. So. All right. Now, hopefully you still have all 16 of these highlighted. We want to do the same. <clears throat> we want to do the same exact thing when any of these labels are clicked. Would you agree with that? All right. We basically want its color to change from cornflower blue to black so we can see the image doesn't matter which one we click we want that to happen so with all of these highlighted like this with all of these highlighted what I want you to do again look over the screen remember this thing right here that lightning bolt I want you to click that lightning bolt and that's going to change what's shown on here I want you to find click right there and I want you to go over to the right by click and type in label underscore click with a big C so it looks just like that by the click routine type in label L A B E L don't put L E E L underscore click with a big C once you do that hit enter and it's going to open up your code window this is the code that we want to run if any of those 16 grids are clicked does that make sense? Again, there are other ways that this program could conceivably be written. All right. This is the way that this author has chosen to write it. All right. This is longer. This is this is the heart of the program. And if you if you're following along on the handout I gave you, it's on pages three and four. Now, as Jesse mentioned and he's right when I created this this morning I call this table layout whatever the heck it is so it's got a real long name I changed it here to TLP so you'd have less typing even with the IntelliSense I thought it would be easier so sorry if that confused you it sure wasn't meant to I'm not going to type in any of the comments all right what we're going to want to have happen eventually if you look up on the screen here All right. right now, if we go and run this, nothing happens, and that's fine. But what we're going to want to have happen is if I click here, I'm going to want that picture to show. And if I click here, I'm going to want that picture to show. Would you agree with that? So let's assume this, I click here and it's the bicycle. I click here and it's the eye. Would you also agree I don't have a match? So we want it to show for just a second and have it disappear. Does that make sense? 
Well, what if we got somebody who's a cheater? All right, what I mean is this. They click here, and they click here. And we're going to put a timer into the program in just a minute. But while what happens is while that timer is going, I start to click a bunch of other ones. See what I'm saying? If You can actually cheat in the game if you don't put a timer in. I could probably click four or five of them. And it wouldn't have a match, but I'd know where those four or five are so I could win the game faster. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a test in there that says if we attempt to click more than two of them, just return. Don't allow it to happen, period. All right, so that's the first check we're going to put in. I'm going to put a comment here. You don't have to put in the comment, but make it impossible to click greater than two buttons. That's all I'm going to put in there. All right, so if the first clicked is not equal to null, and, and I'm going to put this on two lines because I just want you to be able to read it. The second clicked is not equal to null. Just get the hell out. Return. That's it. That's the first part. And this may confuse you, so I'll let you put it in, and then I want to explain to you what's going on in there. All right? <clears throat> right here, this that you see in blue, let's let's put this in English. All right? Don't worry about no. But in English, with this, what this says is, hey, if I click something and I click something else, don't allow me to click anything else. Does that make sense? So the first time I click, whatever one of those 16 grids I click becomes first clicked. All right? Whatever one I click second becomes second clicked. So if either one, if both of those have a value, don't allow me to click anymore. That's exactly what that check is saying. All right. You may or may not remember this. We talked about this in class a little bit, what this stuff means. You may or may not remember. All right. Sender is who did this? Who did this? So who did the clicking? All right. Typically, it's you. We don't want that to be you. We want to set it up so who did the clicking? The label is basically what's in charge right here, and that's what we're going to put in next. This, we don't even care about. Again, when you use event arguments, that's typically for like mouse coordinates. So if I was writing a game, and I wanted to make sure when you got to the end of the screen, instead of falling off, you went back to the other end type of an idea, that's where we'd use that. All right? So let's come in here. We're going to put this, and I'm going to, again, just put a single simple comment that says convert sender <clears throat> object to a label all right and how do we do that we say label clicked label equals sender as label now that looks a little bit weird <clears throat> Again, what I'm telling the system to do is to try to put those labels in charge of how the program is going to run. All right? The only problem with that is what if I do that and it doesn't work? I mean, what if I try to do it and if for some reason there's an error? It's not impossible that that could happen. If it tries to do this conversion and the conversion doesn't work, look up on the screen what's in blue. It's going to try to convert that. It's going to try to convert the sender to a label. And if it can, it puts it in click label. If it can't do it, click label equals no. Meaning there's nothing in there. So 
We're going to say that if click label equal null, get the hell out. That's it. All right. Again, we're not done yet, but I just want you to, as we go through this, I'm trying to do it in a very iterative type of manner, step by step. Again, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to run the game again. All right? Still not doing anything, which is, again, is fine. It's going to be in just a minute. But right now, the game is stupid. Did you hear what I said? The game is stupid. So let's assume I click this one right here. And let's assume that the one right here, I'm not an artist, you know that, but that's got the eye in it. Okay, so we're going to assume when I click right there, that's got the I in it. Well, if I want to win the game right now, I could win the game by clicking this and then clicking it again. The same icon. I could do that because I haven't set it up so that if this, is, if this one's already clicked, don't allow you to click it again. So that's what we're going to put in next. Again, you have to think about stuff like this. So if you're creating applications that other people are going to use... People are going to try to cheat. All right. There was there was a game you may or may not have heard of this. There was a game many years ago. This was your screen, and there were a pair of eyes on the screen. They looked like googly eyes. They looked like that. And the idea let me get rid of that. The idea with that with that pair of googly eyes is you were supposed to take your mouse and move over here and try to click them. And if you click them, you won the game. Doesn't sound like it's hard, does it? But when you got close, it, it moved to another random location on the screen by default. Does that make sense? Somebody figured out if you held out on control and one of the function keys, it didn't move. So everybody was winning the game because they, the person who programmed it didn't program that in. So we're trying to program stuff in and think about how a user could possibly cheat, and we're trying to make it as hard for them to cheat as possible. All right. So the next check that we're going to make in here <clears throat> is we're going to check, again, to see if you've already clicked the icon. So how do you know if you've already clicked the icon? Somebody answer me this question. Look at this. How do I know if I've already clicked one of those? How do I know? Come on, it's not that hard. The color's black. If it's not blue, it's black, and it's black because it has the image. All right? So that's all we have to check for. So we're going to come in here and say if the label we just clicked, which we called click label dot for color equals color dot black, and that's exactly what you just said. Oops, but you have to spell black, right? All right? If click label dot and it's equal equal not equal, all right. Again, what do we want to do? Get out. Return. Have you noticed? Look on the screen here, everybody. Have you noticed right here? We're returning. We're just returning. We're just returning. Everybody see that? You might think, yeah, I'm just going to put all those in just one big if statement. Don't do that. It's not similar logic. You're checking different stuff. So I'll put a little comment here that says, don't let same uh, icon, no, not icon, uh, square, let's say, square be clicked twice. Something like that. All right? All right, now we're making progress. But now we got to know when you clicked it, is it the first time you clicked it or is it the second time you clicked it? If it's the first time you clicked it, you just want it to stay up on the screen, right? But if it's the second time you clicked it, then you're going to have to end up checking to see if there's a match. So that's what we're going to check next, to see if it's the first click or if it's the second click. 
How do we know if, if it's the first click? What do I have to put here? What do I put right there? If it hasn't been clicked yet, what's its value? All right. That means it has not yet been clicked. All right. So what do we want to do then? Well, it becomes our, you know, it's the one we just clicked. All right. And what else do we want it to do? You know this. What we just clicked on this, what do we want to have happen on that screen? Turn it black. And then just get out. I'm going to save this. I'll come right back to it, but I'm going to run this. I should be able to click any one I want now, and it should show. But can't do anything else because I didn't program anything else. Does that make sense? So I know with what I've done so far, that's working. That's good. So now i got to check if we get down to here. If I get down to here, look on your screen, please. If I get down to here, there was something in the first one, correct? What does that mean? If I get down to here, what in English does this mean? If I've already clicked the first one, what does it mean? What? It's the second one. It has to be. Because it's a label click. So it's not the first, so it must be the second. Don't put an else here. We don't even need an else. We don't need to make a check. So if this is the case, I want to do this same stuff, but instead of typing in first clicked, I want this to be second clicked. Of course, I have to spell it right. All right. Still not done. But let me check this now. So let's see. First, second. Now, is there a problem with this? You tell me. They're not disappearing. There's other problems, too, but they're not disappearing. All right. And I can only click two of them. Not, not a very fun game, even if I match them. I didn't win anyway. All right. So what do I have to do? I now have two of them that I've clicked. Think about this. Here's their game. Let's imagine I've been playing for a while. Okay? So let's say a, a bunch of these I've already figured out. Now I click two more. What do I have to check for every time I, I click two of them? What do I have to check for every time? Not, not you're right. That's part of it. But also, did I win? Am I done? All right. So what I'm going to put in here, I'm going to put a call into a function we haven't written yet. Everybody hear me? I'm putting in a call to a function we have not yet written. We'll just call this, whoops, I'll put a comment here that will literally say, check for winner. And then I'll call a routine that's called check for winner. But I'm going to comment that out right now because I didn't write it yet. Okay? We'll write that in just a couple minutes. When we write this, would you agree when we come back from this, you either won or you didn't win? Would you agree with that? All right. 
if we won, we're going to handle that in our check for winner. We're going to give them a congratulatory message, and we're going to get out. We're going to stop the game. We're not allowing this to be played more than once. We could do that with it by putting this whole thing in a loop. We're not doing that. All right? So if we get down to here, they didn't win yet. Does that make sense? We get down to this point, they did not yet win. All right? But if there's a match, if we did match to them, now we want to leave them there. And if there's not a match, we don't want to leave them there. Does that make sense? All right? Now to do this, we're going to use a timer, but we don't have a timer on our system yet. So go back to design mode. All right? Look in your toolbox and find a timer. There it is. And notice what happens when I click it. I double click timer and you may or may not be able to tell it shows up on the bottom of the screen timer is an invisible control did you hear me it's invisible it's also called the container control because it does not exist on the form itself all right now we're going to want to do a couple things with the timer for now the only thing we care about is make sure that timer is highlighted and notice it says tick. We're going to write that code in just a minute, but I'm going to click back over here. Look, look on the screen. I'm going to click on the one next to the lightning bolt. So that shows. Okay. This interval is not very long. Right now, if we run this, it's going to go like that. So it's going to show on the screen. It's going to disappear. We don't want to do that. So it says 100 for the interval. Change it to about 750. That'll work fine. So we added a timer, we went into the timer properties, and we changed the interval property from 100 to 750. Everybody cool with that? All right, let's go back into our code then, because now, now we want to use that timer in here. So we just checked, and we're down to here, which meant we didn't have a winner. All right, but it's possible we didn't have a winner, but as Evan said before, we have a match. So we matched two of them. How do we know if we matched? If if first clicked dot text equals second click dot text. So I'll put a comment here that says if true, we have a match. Right. So if that's the case, we've got a match. All we want to have happen is we want those two things to stay on the screen. Does that make sense? So the way we keep them on the screen is we say first clicked equal null. And we also say second clicked equal null. And that will keep them on the screen. That will actually keep them on the screen. But if this isn't true, look on the screen. Somebody tell me. If this isn't true, if we're going to put an else in there, what does it mean? It's not a match. So we're going to put an else in here. Not a match. Else. And what do we want to do if it's not a match? We want to start, it, start our timer. All right, and that, all that's doing is it's telling us to start our timer. All right, but right now the timer isn't doing anything because we didn't put anything in that tick event. Remember that, that tick event that we saw? Okay, so I'm going to save. I'm going to go back again to my design mode because this is the easiest way to do it. Take your mouse and double-click on your timer. So go back to here, take your mouse, double-click on your timer. It will bring you back into your code window right here. Remember, we did not have a match. Did you hear me? We did not have a match. So the first thing we want to do is we're, we're done with our timer. So we started it. Now it can stop. So that's the first thing. All right. What did we say? Look on the screen. 
So let's assume, okay, this is the eye, and this is, I don't even remember what else there is, this is the bicycle, okay? Again, I'm not a, an artist, but you get the idea. These did not match, right? Okay, so we stop our timer. What do we want to do here? What? Reset them to what? Blue. That's correct. We want them to be blue. Now, show you the two different ways of doing this. And the second way is the way I would suggest you do it. All right? We could come in here and just say this. So we could come in here and literally just say this. All right, so we've got that. We could come in here and just say this. This is not what I want you to type in, but we could type in first click dot four color. What color are we using? You know, it'll eventually find it. I'll have to say uh, color dot. But the problem with that is, what if I change my color later? Isn't that possible? I don't like cornflower blue anymore. I want it to be crimson red. So the easiest way to do this, if you look up on the screen, is to say this. See that? Doesn't that make sense? That way, if we change the background color, the foreground co color will be changed automatically to keep up with it. And not only do we want to do this for the first click, we want to do it for the second click. Finally, the last thing we want to do in here is we want to say first clicked equal null and second clicked equal null. In other words, that's just getting us ready for the next turn. So I'll put a comment here that says reset image color to match background. And I'll put another comment here that just says get ready for next turn. Let's save this. I'll come right back to the program, but let's see what's going on now. See what's happening? Everybody see that? Now those stayed, but notice, boom, they're gone in 750 milliseconds. So I can keep playing. You can see how bad I am at this. All right, but eventually, hopefully, eventually, I'll figure it out and I'll get everything to match. All right? Just want to do that just so. All right. What's missing? What? Yeah, you're both right. I won, but there's no nothing telling me that I won. That's not good. So just about everything is working. Just about. Except I didn't, and now I can come back in there and I can write that function. Remember the one that we put in here before that we commented out? Check for winner? Let's write that now. So I'm going to uncomment here. It's going to give me an error because I haven't written it yet. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of my screen, the bottom, and I'm going to write private. Let me move this up. Void. Check for winner. Not winner. Winner. All right, and I'm going to put that code in there now. How many lines are there? I don't know, 10 or 15. And I believe once we're done with that, the game will be finished. All right, so check for winner. So what do I want to do? I want to know what my current label is. So I'm just going to say label, label. All right. And then I want to iterate through this. Remember before we did that for loop? Long time ago this, I'm going to copy this because I'm too lazy to go and type it in again.
I'll let you get that far. Then we're just going to write a message box and do our application.exit, and we're finished. So if we have not won yet, we just want to return. Look on the screen if you would, please. Does everybody understand this loop? That's checking all 16 of our things in there, and it's saying, hey, is there anyone that doesn't have a match? How do we know if it doesn't have a match? It doesn't have a match if the four color and the back color are the same thing. All right? So we know we haven't won yet. But if we get down here, so if we get after the for loop, all right, so here's the end of the for loop right here. So if we get after the for loop, we won. We won the game. So I'm going to put in here a message box dot show. I'll just put the whole thing in here. Congrats. You won. Game over. We'll just put an OK button in there. And we'll put the icon to just information, I guess. And you may or may not remember this, application.exit. That's your program right there. So if you won, you're going to give them a message, and you're going to get the heck out. I don't see any errors in here, so I don't think that I've made any mistakes. We'll find out in just a minute. All right. I'll come right back, but I'm going to save it and try it. And there's my message. Now, think about how you could start improving this. All right? You don't have to look up here, but please listen if you would. Think about how do you could start improving this. First of all, it's just you play. We could set it up for two players. And then we could keep track of how many matches each player had. That's one thing we could do. We could even just keep track of how many it took us to do. All right. Again, just please listen. Think think about it. Let, let's say that you did it and you got really good at this game. How would you make I'm, – I'm asking you this question. Can somebody answer this? How would you make a second level? Yeah. Would it be possible to double the squares? Well, that's one way you could do it. There's two ways. 
One is you could double the number of squares. The other one is you could take that time interval and shrink it from 750 down to like 200. So it's going to just flash on the screen. So there's different ways you could make it harder for the user to play the game. Does that make sense? Questions? I'm going to come back and do one last thing here. That is, I'm going to do a save all, and I'm going to come back here and say version 3. Rest of code entered. The game is now operational. All right. Again, it doesn't matter what you put for a comment, but I've got that in there. I'm going to do a commit all. Now notice when I go in and I do my action version history, I now have three, three different copies. Version 3, version 2, and the initial, which I forgot to call version 1. Now, just so you know this, let's, let's pretend for a minute. We wrote this program, and we're like, you know what? All that code that I put in there, I really wish I hadn't done that. I could always go back to here, click on this one, right mouse click, and choose revert. That'll make my, it'll basically get rid of everything I did since the second time I saved. Does that make sense? This is why you use source control for you. So again, even though I changed one or two of the variable names, you have all the code. Hopefully everybody got theirs to work. We're going to do one last thing, and then the rest of the period is yours. But I'd like you all to do this right now. And I'd like you to do it. I can maybe even actually show you that program. Um, I, I'd like to show you what we're going to be working on tomorrow, or at least start to show you. So if you would, please bring up your browser of choice and go out to GitHub. Dot com. Go out to github.com. Even if you have a GitHub account, all right, I'd appreciate it if you create a new one. I'm going to call mine my name, but afterwards I'm going to put RTC. There might be other Jeff Scotts out there. There shouldn't be a Jeff Scott RTC. So I'm literally going to put Jeff Scott RTC. And from my email, jpscott at rankin.edu and notice what it's telling me well that isn't good it says it's already taken because I already do have one for me you shouldn't I thought if I just gave it another name it would take that do I have one for my charter account I have no clue that's already taken well and I'm then let's see uh, Jeff Scott rtc at gmail.com all right that's not taken that's my one of my gmail accounts that's one of my 16 gmail accounts don't do that it's stupid i actually have more than 16 i actually have closer to 40 because i had to create gmail accounts when i used to teach iphone at the school i was at i had to create email accounts for all the students so i've got like jeff scott student 001 at gmail.com etc all right, and give it a password. Doesn't matter what it is. All right, so. Sign up for GitHub. You know, up to you whether or not you want to save it in your system. Welcome to GitHub. Step two, choose your plan. Please choose the unlimited public repositories. Unless you want to pay $7 a month. And I, I'm guessing you don't. So just use the default, click continue. Step three, tailor your experience. That's up to you. I'm not going to even do that. I'm just going to submit. All right. Now, this is where you'll come to after you do that. You can, as it says, go and read the guide. It's, it's, a, it's worth reading. It really is. 
especially if you've never done this before. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click start a project. All right, please verify your email address. So it's going to be it's going to send me that email address. That's going to be interesting because now I have to remember that email ad, or that the password for that. All right. But when you get in, when you get in, what you'll want to do then, all right, when you get in, what you'll want to do is we'll want to create a new repository. That's going to be a repository on GitHub. Tomorrow, we're going to take what we just did and move it out or copy it over to GitHub. All right. I've done it, but I want to make sure that I've got all the steps and I document them. So if people have questions, all right, we'll get it to work. So tomorrow morning, at least three things we're doing. We're going to go over Chapter 3, which is on branching. We're going to go over Chapter 6, which is on GitHub. Then we're going to actually go and attempt to reconcile this where we can change it here. Anybody remember when we change something here? and we want to send it over to GitHub, what's that called? It's a push. We're also going to do a pull where we make a change on GitHub and we copy it back to here. That's a pull. Got the difference? So we're going to do both of those tomorrow. If there's any time left, we'll talk about what we're going to end up doing for you know, setting up our... Yeah. Okay. So what, what we're going to end up doing then is talk about the database structure we're going to use for the last project that we're going to do. The C-sharp one with a database, we're going to talk about that. All right, questions on anything? Hopefully you got something out of this. You at least just kind of see how it works, et cetera. Either turns you on or turns you off, I guess. So no other questions? All right, then the rest of the period is yours. And again... I want to say this one last time. Thank you to the gentleman who actually created this. I want to give him kudos. It is Michael Hicks. All right. And again, I don't claim that I did this. I claim I did not do this. I basically grabbed his stuff but used it just so we had what I was hoping at least would be a fun little exercise that we could do. All right.